Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with number 6 in the series We're Standing on the Shoulders of Giants from Rui Lopez to Magnus Carlsen. But first I have to tell you about a competition I'm running. Yes, you can win a chess book sponsored by the Mind Game Shop run by women grandmaster Erika Siva. She's a four-time Hungarian and five-time Dutch national champion and she runs two websites, the Best Z, where she sells chess books and the Mind Game Shop. The link is there and I will put a link as well in the description box. Please go and have a look on that website and if you can please order something there. As this video is about the strongest players and the world champions in the history of our game, the question is simple. Of the 28 world champions, and I'll list them in a minute, who is your favorite? And I'd like you to explain that in one sentence, explaining why that player is your favorite. You can post the sentence as a comment underneath this video or by email to classroomchess at gmail.com. I'm looking forward to your entries and I'll be the jury, or I tell you what, I'll ask Erika Siva to be the jury. The winner will win a chess book, which I will send by post. And as I said, it's sponsored by the Mind Game Shop and I want to thank Erika Siva for this. It will be a weekly competition. I will do six weeks of competition. Every week there will be a different question from October 7th to November 11th, 2017. And again, there's the link. Please have a look at the website of the Mind Game Shop. Let the competition begin. I'm looking forward to your entries. Back to the subject of this video, we're standing on the shoulders of giants from Rui Lopez to Magnus Carlsen. These are the strongest players of their era before we had official world champions. In the first five videos in this series, I covered the first eight names there. This video is about Louis Charles Maé de la Bourdonnais from France, who was the strongest player in the world from 1821 to 1840. In future videos, we'll go and have a look at Howard Staunton, Adolf Anderson and the great Paul Morphy. Then we get to the official world champions Steinitz, Lasker, Capablanca, Aljochin, Euwe, Bodwinnik, Smyslov, Tal, Petrosian, Spassky, Fischer, Karpov Kasparov, Kramnik, Anand and the current world champion Magnus Carlsen. We'll cover them all in this series. As said, this video is about Louis Charles Maé de la Bourdonnais. This is what he looked like. He was born in 1795 and died in 1840. And he played in that famous café in Paris, which is no longer there, Café de la Régence. He was forced to earn his living as a professional chess player after losing his fortune on land deals, bad land deals. He died in London in December 1840, having been forced to sell all of his possessions, including his clothes, to satisfy his creditors. In 1824 he crushed the English masters on a visit to London and in 1834 he played six matches, a total of 85 games against the Irishman Alexander Macdonnell, the strongest player on the British Isles at that time. But La de La Bourdonnais beat Macdonnell, 45 wins for him, 27 to Macdonnell and 13 draws. Macdonald died in 1835, de la Bourdonnais five years later, and he was buried close to his old rival in London. Let's have a look at de la Bourdonnais' evergreen from that match played in 1834 against Alexander Macdonnell. White is Macdonald, black is de la Bourdonnais, and let's look at his position from the black side from de la Bourdonnais as this video is about him. E4, C5, the Sicilian, Knight F3, Knight C6, D4, C takes, Knight takes, and E5. And Garry Kasparov in his book My Great Predecessors gives this move an exclamation mark and he says this is for the breakthrough in time. It was 150 years before Grandmaster Yevgeny Sveshnikov developed this variation. Macdonald took on C6, Kasparov writes Nowadays, every schoolboy knows that knight b5 is the only move. But in pre-Steinitzian times, 
they aimed for a rapid development and an attack and an attack rather than paying attention to positional nuances like a weak square on d5 because that square is no longer weak because after b takes e6 that pawn is covering the d5 square bishop c4 knight f6 and bishop g5 which kasparov calls a futile anti-positional move why exchange the bishop yes we'll see later that White is going to give this bishop for the knight. Bishop e7 from De La Bourdonnais. Queen e2 and d5. Kasparov says this move is more energetic than castling. And there comes bishop takes f6. Kasparov says a serious error giving the bishop pair for nothing. De La Bourdonnais took back with the bishop. Bishop b3, both players castled, and a5, good move, with the threats of a4, cornering the bishop, and also bishop a6, securing queen and rook. Macdonald took on d5, c takes d5, rook d1, and d4, and let me give you a quote from the second world champion, Emmanuel Lasker, he says... However, the adversary chose to march its troops intrepidly. De La Bourdonnais followed him and fought for the center of the board with courage and imagination. A nice quote. And indeed, De La Bourdonnais has a very strong center here. Macdonald played c4 and Kasparov calls this, 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 calls this the decisive mistake. It was wrong to allow black spawns to become passed since it does not prove possible to blockade them on the light squares. And we'll see that in this game. Kasparov said that Macdonald should have played knight d2, and he gave this variation. a4, bishop goes to c4, a3, b3, and bishop b7. And he says black is better. He has the two bishops, he has the center, but white can still fight. After c4, De La Bourdonnais played queen b6, bishop c2, bishop b7, knight d2, and rook a e8. Kasparov comments that taking on b2 is too greedy. He prefers the move played in the game. Knight e4, Bishop d8, saving the bishop and making room for the f-pawn. c5, queen c6. That's a very powerful battery of queen and bishop looking at a g2 square. So f3 is a logical move. Bishop e7 from de la Bourdonnais. Rook ac1. And there comes f5. Kasparov writes, the beginning of the end, the bishops are firing from afar and the pawns break through in the center, for which black does not begrudge giving up the exchange. Because indeed white can now win the exchange. And he does. Queen c4 check. King in the corner. And bishop a4, skewering queen and rook. Queen went to h6. Macdonald took, and f takes e4, and Kasparov writes, the avalanche of past pawns sweeps away everything in its path. c6, the best move from Macdonald. e takes f3, rook c2, queen e3 check, king h1, and La Bourdonnais saves his bishop, bishop c8, Bishop d7 and f2. Rook f1 blocking the pawn, but there comes the next one d3. Rook c3 from Macdonald attacking the d3 pawn with both rook and queen. But the La Bourdonnais finds the refutation. He takes on d7, the best move, and you can now not take on d3, for example, with the rook, because then there is bishop e6. 
and black is counter-attacking white's queen. You cannot take the queen because there's bishop takes c4 and attacking the rook on f1 and that f-pawn will go through. So after bishop takes d7, Macdonald took back on d7 and e4. Queen c8 threatening to take on f8 and if the bishop takes back then white promotes. So bishop d8 was played by de la Bourdonnais. Queen back to c4, queen e1 and of course you cannot take the queen because then there is checkmate f takes e1 checkmate so Macdonald played rook c1 d2 queen c5 in a between move threatening checkmate on f8 de la Bourdonnais played the save move rook g8 rook d1 to save that rook and e3 Queen c3, and now de la Bourdonnais finishes the game. Queen takes d1, rook takes d1, and the last move of the game, e2. What an amazing position this is. Black is threatening to, prom to promote on f1, on e1, on d1, and as Kasparov writes, Philidor would certainly have been delighted by such a fantastic pawn search. This inimitable finish is one of the most remarkable positions to have occurred in the 19th century. As in the, indeed a very pretty picture. You should print it out and hang it on your wall. That was Louis Charles Maille de la Bourdonnais, the ninth strongest player of his era in the history of our wonderful game. And as you could see, he was quite a player. Quick reminder of the competition, you can win a chess book as sponsored by the Mind Game Shop, and please have a look at that website. Of the 28 world champions, who is your favorite? Explain in one sentence why this player is your favorite, and post it either as a comment underneath this video, or send an email to classroomchess at gmail.com. I'm looking forward to your entries. This is Rick from Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.